Hi guys, uh, this is a very basic uh, walker tutorial for Arma. Uh, I assume you know how to uh, import a vehicle, so I will not be covering that part. Um, I will only uh, perform some simple, a very very simple walking animation and um, add the script to, to make it uh, move while um, based on uh, the vehicle speed so um, okay first of all I just started by um, I based this thing on the uh, sample tank from the armor 3 sample files as you can see these are the memory points for the wheels and uh, if I go to wireframe mode you can see I added see here I added an axis point here by the legs. So the the whole uh, walking animation, like I said, will be super simple. It will just be like this, back and forth. So um, I just named this selection uh, leg left and uh, leg right. And then uh, the rest I named the body. If you go into the memory uh, points, the memory lot, I just gave them the name axis legs. So let's see. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, just export it like you normally would. Uh, I prepared some uh, very simple configs for uh, this purpose. Um, uh, you should be familiar with the uh, the CFG vehicles class and model CFG. Uh, if not, this tutorial is not for you. <laughs> um, first of all, just add the bones like you uh, like you do in any other animation, and just create a, a very uh, basic rotation animation. Uh, and like I said. Uh, this is super simple and um, making it look nice while walking that will be in a, a later tutor tutorial. This is just to illustrate uh, how the, the walking script works. Uh, so uh, let's, let me just show you how it looks in um, Bulldozer with these animations right here. Um, not working. Oh yeah, I know why. Because I I renamed it. So I said I based it on the test tank, but uh, then I renamed it to, to Walker, and it has to match the the class of the uh, model CFG. So uh, let's try again. <clears throat> It will just look like this and um, if you see when I scroll the wheel up it reaches the value 1 and all the way back it reaches the value negative 1 and that's uh, defined here I said that the, the uh, left leg uh, has the minimum and maximum values here 1 and negative 1 and it will uh, rotate uh, you know minus 35 degrees and 35 degrees and then and then the um, right leg will uh, be opposite of the left leg it will inherit everything but of course the selection is different and the um and the uh, movements are opposite so um yeah when this leg moves its leg forward this moves back so um i will provide these files in the description by the way, so uh, don't worry about that. Um, if uh, let me just zoom in so it's easier to see. Uh, in this uh, very basic uh, CFG vehicles class, all I did, or, or all you need to add, is the um, event handlers class. This will trigger. Uh, use this method here to trigger. Uh, this 
script right here. Uh, sorry, wrong folder. Yeah, just place it in in here, and it will um, it will trigger this script on spawn as soon as you place it in Eden uh, too. But um, let's take a look at the script. Oh wait, uh, let me just explain the um, animation source. This has to be defined in this class. The animation source, I just call it walk. And uh, if you go back into the model CFG, you see um, I added it here. Because we have to call on this animation source in our script in order to make it walk. So yeah. Now let's take a look at this script right here. Um, this is also very simple, basic. Uh, in order to make it look nice, you will need uh, a much bigger script. Uh, but uh, yeah, I surround it with an if statement, so I don't want uh, the script to be triggered while you're in Eden. And I, I'm not. I'm only triggering the script on the server as well. Otherwise, uh, every client will um, start its own animations and uh, you will kind of spam the networks and things will get out of sync, etc. Uh, so, I just defined these two private variables right here. This means that um, Whatever object I passed into the script that is located in uh, in this uh, this is an array, right? So the first position in this array is the object we passed. So um, it means this uh, this thing, <laughs> or at least that's what I <laughs> uh, I believe it is. I might be wrong here. This object is passed into this this script and you can fetch it like this and I store it into the uh, variable called V that's just for a vehicle and um, I use this speed variable to um, check if the vehicle is moving or not so first of all I just uh, perform a while loop this will um, continue to go as long as the uh, vehicle is alive it will go and go and go and go and that's why it's important to add some sleeping uh, functionalities here otherwise you will uh, <laughs> you will uh, cause lag um, I also added another if statement inside so uh, it's not necessary to to run the rest of this uh, code if uh, if the vehicle is empty or if it uh, and only if it can move if it's damaged or or anything it's not the, the script will continue running but it will it will skip this part it's not necessary to run this if these conditions aren't met so let's say the the vehicle is crewed and it can move then it will move into this uh, segment right here and here is another while loop that will continue to go as long as the engine is on and here here I fetch the I fetch the speed of the vehicle. Uh, uh, it's an absolute. Let's see here. No, it's the actual speed. So I can determine if it's um, reversing or moving forward. So uh, yep. Yeah. First if statement. I just check if the if it is moving. If it is bigger than zero point one or lesser less than. Uh, negative point one. I start by animating the walking animation right here and then I wait until the the walking animation is bigger or equals than one. Um, it shouldn't really ever be bigger than one but uh, I have uh, experienced in some cases in especially in multiplayer games where the um, you give it a value like this 
and then it it won't never it, it won't always reach this exact value it can sometimes be 0 0.9999 something or or uh, something else so um what's going on is that uh, uh, i'm waiting until this animation is complete giving it the value 1 will cause it to do let's see it will cause it to do this and it waits until it reaches this value right here and then it continues and then i i give it the value negative 1 and then it will start to uh, move the legs the other way until it reaches negative one and just continue to go like this as long as there the vehicle has speed um, yeah and um, if the vehicle is uh, if you stop the vehicle is uh, zero I will just uh, give uh, the walking animation uh, the value of zero so it will uh, resets uh, resets its legs to the starting position uh, yeah um, okay let me just show you how it looks in game As you can see, it doesn't look really nice, but uh, yeah, that's the very basics of making it move at least. So if I stop, it should stop, yep. And if I move back, it also moves. Yeah. Uh, the reason I added these other conditions inside the wait untils is that um, uh, if if something were to happen while it's waiting for something, um, let's just, let's say something happens that uh, makes it unable to reach this value, it will just hang and wait forever. So I uh, I just added this too that um, so also if the the engine is uh, shut off, it just uh, exits the script right here or uh, it, it exits the wait until I'm sorry not the script uh, and I added a, a little bit of sleep in there too because I um, I don't want to use unnecessarily uh, unnecessary CPU power Uh, okay, I think yeah, that's it for this tutorial. Um, maybe the next one will be a little more advanced, and uh, maybe can make it look nicer. Okay, bye guys.